Hello Gecko fans, this is Wally Kroon with Supreme Gecko again. And today we're talking about decisions. Everybody has decisions in their life. Everyday decisions like what TV show to watch, what movie to watch, uh, coffee or soda, apples or oranges, paper, paper or plastic. Everybody has decisions. When you're confronted with a situation where you have a gecko that you have no information on the internet about, you have to make decisions. And that's what we're going to talk about now. The best way to determine how to keep those geckos successfully. Sweetheart, we're out of toilet paper. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Disaster averted. So today we're going to talk about Hemidactylus tridress. This is an animal that I picked up at the NARBC show in Tinley Park this last fall, October 2019. Beautiful, beautiful animal. Just not a lot of information. If you go online, go into Google, type up Hemidactylus tridress, you're just not going to find anything other than they're an Indian gecko. That's about it. I talked to the breeder, I talked to several other people, there just wasn't a whole lot of information around. So at that point, you have to make a decision, should I keep it tropical, should I keep it arid, should I keep it uh, as a terrestrial animal, should I keep it as an arboreal animal? Well, let's go down to the facility and I'll show you what I decided. And thank you for joining me in the facility again. You've been down here. This is the 15 gallon uh, setup rack that I have. There's 10, 15 gallons here and I keep my most of my Africans on this rack. Some are grow out, some are breeders. And we're gonna take a look at the Hemidactylus tridress. Getting all set up here, I've got my kindergarten chair all set. This is the chair that I use to be able to see these animals and work on their tanks. Let me move it back and let's take a look at these animals. And again, it's all about decisions. So without a whole lot of information, I tried to set this tank up as best as I could to benefit the animals. I've got a lot of flower pot hides in here. I've got the food dish, I've got the water dish. I have a moist hide as well. Something that I don't, normally don't put into African geckos or India geckos at, in this case. And I have a cork bark in the back and I also have some slate piled up. And I'll see if I can get a better view of these. And normally what I, where I find these animals, these Hemidactylus tridress, is under that brown flower pot uh, right in the middle, right by the hide. So we're going to go ahead and take a look to see if we can find these animals and see what they prefer. And that's the key here is I give them a lot of options so they can choose what they want. Okay, I have the top off and I'm going to go ahead and take a look under some of these containers to see if I can find the animals and we'll see if we could get a feeding response here but taking the top off and moving these uh, objects around probably will spook the animals a little bit and we might not get a good uh, feeding response but let's give it a try okay I went ahead and took the top off the tank and we're going to go ahead and take a look under these flower pots to see if the tridress are under any of them so give me a second here and let's check this white pot first Nothing under there. I don't see a mound of sand under there, so I'm not going to check for eggs. Don't see any animals under this terracotta pot. Do a real quick scan, brushing under the, the sand to see if I uh, see any eggs. Normally they're under this flower pot, but I don't see any at this point. Real quick scan for eggs, nothing. Might not find eggs today. Here's the, the hide that I've put in here too. Okay, let's go ahead and take the top off here. This is a moist hide. I have some dirt, sand, sphagnum, moss mixed in here with some uh, Zilla jungle mix. I don't feel any eggs. Didn't, we didn't see any animals in here, and to be very honest, I haven't found the animals to be in here since I've put this 
Uh, humid hide in here right from the beginning, but I know they're in here because I see the material mixed around quite a bit. It just seems like it's a uh, area that they visit for humidity's sake and uh, hydration's sake, but not for an egg laying area. So we're going to take our last look here and see if we can move some stuff around and get a better view and see if those animals are in the slate cork bark area. And there we go. There's one of them. And here's the other one. So I'm going to do this very gently so I don't disturb them too much. We see a dubia sitting on the, the head of the one. Let's see if we can get a closer view of this. What a cute animal. So these are a bigger hemidactylus in my mind. Guess he didn't like that dubia. But it looks like they like that area in between the slates. So that seems to be the area of preference. I just watched the other one go under what I think is their favorite hiding place. And that's this little uh, flower pot here. Let's see if we can get a better view of that guy. Maybe a little shed issue on its back going on there. I'm sure he'll visit the humid hide and uh, straighten that out real quick. Let's get him back under this hide. And what we're going to do next is we're going to check for eggs in that little area between the rocks. I know a lot of hemidactylists like to bury their eggs right in that area between the slate. So I'm gently combing through the sand here and I don't feel any eggs there. I just went through and checked for eggs in the sand and I didn't see anything, but fortunately we have a little surprise here at the end of this video. Let's go check out the micro gecko stand and uh, let's see what it is. We're over by the micro gecko stand. Well, I call it the micro gecko stand because we used to keep micro geckos in here, breeding pairs in these little tiny six quart tubs. But since then, this is about four or five years ago, I've changed it up to be a baby enclosure stand and it works out really well. You've seen this before, if I remember right. If you haven't, go to the link. I'll, I'll throw a link up on top and you can check that link out. Let's go ahead and check out these hemidactylus tridress. I have some babies and I want to show them to you. Here's our baby hemidactylus tridress setup, and I'm going to go ahead and open this enclosure and we're going to hopefully see some of these babies. I think I have three or four in here right now. Okay, let's see if we can get a close up. There's one right on top. We're very fortunate. Look at that animal. Just beautiful, beautiful markings on this. See if I can get close here without it running off. Love these animals. I have the top open, but they seem to want to go down instead of jumping up. So I'm fairly safe. I'm going to take this first layer off. We're going to see if there's any babies in here. And I see a couple. See if I can position this so we can see them a little bit better. But you can get an idea of what they look like here. I think that was three that we saw. A couple of different age groups. Love these little babies. Very, very simple setup. You can see this is just egg cartons. A water dish, a food dish. And that's about it. I'm feeding baby microworms and baby dubias right now. And that's about it. Let's go ahead and put this back on. Take a look at that. Looks like they have some mealworms in there, so I, again, probably won't get a good feeding response from these guys. 
There it goes. Not a true climbing animal. They're more terrestrial. But just to be safe, let's go ahead and put the top back on. Let's go ahead and put these babies back on the shelf. So I had to make some decisions about the uh, adult animals, how to breed them. So what I did was I just decided to try everything. Give them options. Give the adults options. They can hide in the slate. They could hide in the, the uh, moist hide. They could hide under the flower pots. Give them choices. Make them make the decision instead of you dictating exactly what they should be doing. Thank you, Gecko fans, for tuning in. I really appreciate the support. If you like this video, hit the like below, hit the subscribe, hit the notification all so you don't miss another video. If you like this video, make sure you check out another amazing animal, amazing gecko. I'll throw the link over here. We'll see you next week.